Thank you for staying tuned with us. Uh, this is uh, Nigeria at 58, assessing the performance of uh, our government since independence. Um, now, uh, I still have my guest in the house, uh, Reverend Canon Benjamin Agwejume and uh, Reverend Canon Smart. Uh, I think I lost uh, Dr. Samuel Laleka from South Africa there. Yeah, but now let, 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 let's look at um, the previous government, especially let's look at uh, from 1999 up to now. I think we've had uh, four president that's including the one there now how will you rate their performances i mean looking at obasoyo's eight years uh, some people have said uh, he, he did well some have said uh, he's part of those who brought us here well if i'm to rate all those who have ruled us since 1999 among them the one i will rate with the highest uh, uh, percentage is Olusha Guabasanjo. Because during the time of Olusha Guabasanjo, the death profile of Nigeria was very, very high as a result of military rule. Mm. And during his rule, the debts were paid. We opened up the telecom in, uh, industry. industry by creating jobs for Nigerians. And not only uh, the telecom industry, even uh, the medium uh, uh, skill uh, businesses yeah. were given that support. And you see, because if really you want to uh, affect the lives of uh, your citizens. Those women who are selling Akara and others must be given the, uh, you must create uh, a good environment for their businesses to strive. But though it also have its own areas of uh, failures, but Obasanjo tried in area of creating job, in area of, uh, of uh, security, he tried. He tried his best, only that he could not do much in the Niger Delta area, mm. which uh, Yeradua built on by declaring amnesty for the Niger Delta that brought peace to the Niger Delta area. Yeah. But when you as look... A, as a matter of fact, some people have even rated him as one of the president with good hearts. Uh, Yaradua. Yara, Yaradua. Yara, yes, Yaradua tried his best. But I see Rito Basanjo above Yaradua. Why? Because, number one, if you want to, if you want to maintain peace, they said uh, uh, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Mm. You cannot talk of peace. You cannot talk of uh, fighting insecurity when people are jobless. <laughs> If a man has something doing, he can provide for his family. He will not think of uh, other neg negative means of making money. Because he, he will feel that, yes, I have a genuine means. I have a job doing to cater for my family. But in a situation whereby a man has a family of maybe six or seven, and has nothing doing, he cannot provide for his family, then he will take up yeah, arms yeah. or look for other uh, alternative to provide uh, for his family. And that is what is really causing insecurity in our country. Now, then if you look at other areas, yes, we may say that, yes, this president, uh, current president, is trying. But I don't really see any tangible effort. I don't really see any because what I'm just seeing is pure nepotism. Mm. No job creation, insecurity, okay. we economy. Have, we have a caller, uh, Joseph from Bauchi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Joseph, speak on. Hello? Mr. Hello? Joseph, go ahead. Okay. Uh, 
I, I, I see no reason why Nigeria should celebrate the uh, U.S. independence anniversary. Due to what is going on in the country, the country is very, very wrong. Okay. I think you've made your point. It's saying there's no reason why Nigeria should celebrate. So Nigeria is even more divided now than before. Than before. Uh, um, no, 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 uh, Colonel Smith, I, I, I want us to look at the the time between uh, OBJ, Yaradua, and Jonathan. Yeah. Someone said uh, when OBJ, just like uh, that, they also said when OBJ was there, I think Nigeria's debt profile was about thirty billion dollars and which was cleared but as of now we've doubled it and um, mostly there's nothing to show for it exactly so what has happened between the period when uh era took over till now yeah let me start by saying that uh, the leadership we have had over time in this country is nothing but accidental leadership. Mm. Our leaders are not always prepared. They find themselves there, including those who have contested for several uh, period, mm. like the incumbent who, who has uh, did it for three, for, for third time and the fourth time he had the opportunity. It's still like they are not prepared for leadership. And that is why we have most of these problems that we have. Reason being that the moment they are there, it's as if there is a certain force in Asso Rock that is holding them down. From performing. From performing. <laughs> you understand? Mm. But the reason for most of these things is the fact that there is no political will to, to do what is right. Mm. What do I mean? Once you have become the president of a nation, irrespective of where you come from, you are now the president. And because you are now the president, what is expected is to be sure that everybody, every Nigerian becomes your son. And you, you ensure that you take care of their welfare and bring policies that will make things so work, work well. For them. Systems that can work, uh, create an enabling environment and everything. But you see, from the current administration, his body language alone make a lot of investors to leave this country. Mm. Now, let's, let's go back to uh, the OBJ. He took over from the military and there were a lot of problems that he inherited. But God used him and he was able to clear some of those debts, not without the help of technocrats that he brought on. They were the ones that helped him. But later at some point, you know, he started having problems with some of those mm. technocrats. Like Ngozi how to practically leave the place. Because the economic blueprint of the country that, that was uh, written was not followed. So certain things started going bad. Mm. But all the same, we will say that during his time, a lot of achievement was, uh, we were able to achieve a lot. Uh, uh, teachers were able to start riding motorcycle during his time. During the standard was when people started knowing that the work of a teacher is actually an honorable job mm. compared to when it's coming before. So a lot of things were opened up. During Yeradua, uh, the amnesty and so many other things were stabilized. Mm. Country was stabilized. But he lived um, for two years, barely two years. Yes, short and uh, time, Good yeah. Luck took over. And during Good Luck, Jonathan, uh, pro pro Particularly in the electoral processes, a lot of good things was done. We started having free and fair election. It is during this time. Before, you can hear the governor, there are just few states. Lagos, Zamfara, and Borno. These are the places you will hear that either 
A A P P then or A C yeah. uh, you know they were the one that can win it but this other states it has to be P D P but during Jonathan a lot of these things was no longer so you know people people's votes counted and then so many other parties come. okay let, let's pick this call from Lagos Chibweze are you there uh, I'm talking about the security research. In Nigeria, there's nothing like security, and there's no need of security measure because when you look at the security, you understand that the security report of the chief security are from the northern side, and what they are doing is their own favor. If you come out to the, in, the, in the name of the university, you will find out that there are people at least more than the other tribe. But it's not fair. It's not fair. It's not what we've seen in the US today. We use now, we are the youth in the that will be according to the, the, the leaders of tomorrow. But when you look at it, they are, the youth are suffering more than them. So it's not supposed to be like that. When we ask for when we ask for the leaders, we show off our choice. So the, the, but there's nothing like that. Rather, they will be driving. So. I look at uh, I look at it in another perspective. Um, uh, uh, let's look at has there been continuity in government? Because I think that's that's one of the major area we need to look into going forward. Now, are there continuity in government? Uh, one of the challenges we see now is when the government does something, another one abandons it and brings up its own. So it makes a lot of things not to go go well so do you think uh there has been continuity between this successive uh, uh democracy uh, looking at 1999 up to now it, it will be 20 years next year wow no there's nothing like continuity in nigeria mm. and that is why most of our plans are all in short terms not in long terms because we know that each government that comes in place knows that the next one will not continue with its policy. So whatever policy they are putting in place are short terms. If you look at uh, most of our governors, they don't invest in uh, uh, areas or businesses that will affect the masses. That will affect the masses. Mm. They will only put money in areas of... Uh, uh, economic areas that can only last within the time limit when they will stay in office. And that is why Nigeria is not progressing. Take for example, Ajakuta Steel Company. The Ajakuta Steel uh, Company has been there. That is a company that will provide millions of jobs. And it will have chain effect on the economy. It was started, it's not during the Shagari's uh, period. 1979. And a lot of money. One more. The money that the Paris uh, uh, Club uh, refund that was uh, returned some uh, months ago that the vice president is going about distributing, if they put that money into a Jakuta Steel Company, it will do Nigeria more favor because it will provide job opportunity for Atimi youth. It will provide businesses for those women. They are distributing 55,000 5, because the election is here and they know that they have <laughs> failed and they have not performed. So mm. it's quick fees. Mm. Where will this one take us to? Basanjo came in, he did his quick fees. Yaradua came in, unfortunately, he did not see the end of uh, his tenure. Jonathan came in, in he was advised on quick fees. Now, the man who wept. And, and a lot of stealing under him. Yes, the <laughs> man who wept. <laughs> who wept during a presidential debate, making Nigerians to feel that he has a lot to offer, was given the platform and the opportunity and the goodwill. What do we get in return? Instead of even, if you, cannot, if you cannot provide and add value to what you have, mm -hmm. it's also good you maintain the status quo. 
of, of, of but today more than 10 million has lost their jobs mm. within three years so instead of even creating job people are losing their jobs the bag of rice that they used to buy for 7,000 naira is now 17,000 naira. A liter of uh, fuel that uh, we used to buy for, for 87 naira is now 155 naira. Uh, power that we used to pay very less, is now, is, it has been uh, increased, increased astronomically. Hmm. Now, with it, my brother... And the power is not even there. Wait. The power is not even there. No, uh, no. And we are celebrating. <laughs> Let's just take and it. And we say we are in... Now, today, if... You see, our government running to China for loans. Mm. And China are ready to give Nigeria this loan in, according to their own terms. And we say we are celebrating independence when we cannot do anything for ourselves. We cannot without. do anything on our own without relying on them. Is that independence? Is that sovereignty? Well, let, uh, let, let's take it home as we round up uh, this <laughs> section before we move into another section. Yeah. Looking forward, what do you think Nigeria should be looking up to? Thank God there's another election year coming up. Uh, which kind of leadership should we be looking to? Well, before I get to which kind of leadership we should, we should be looking at, I think that Nigeria as a nation need a blueprint or a plan, both short and long term plan. For example, uh, United Arab Emirates, when they discover their oil, they knew already when the oil will finish. Mm. And they look inward. How are we going to sustain ourselves after oil? And they went into tourism. And they were able to build skyscrapers that attract people all over the world. Everybody with a small money will go to Dubai hmm. for holiday and what have you. And that nation is being sustained. I think as a country, we should also look inward. We have to look at life after oil. What happens? Countries are already creating electric cars. Solar cars. Fuels and cool so oil. that uh, we will no longer need fuel. Countries of the world may no longer need fuel in the long run, meaning that fuel prices will crash. What is our plan? Now, since we have the geographical location, virtually there is no place in this country that you can plant something that will not germinate. Even on your roof, if you leave it for some time, you put something, <laughs> it will spring up. This is how blessed we are in this nation. I think we should look at the agriculture and find a way of doing a long-term plan that will sustain, sustain this nation. Mm. That is one aspect. Then the second aspect is the area of leadership. We need someone that the moment he becomes the president, he must see every Nigerian as his own, mm. irrespective of the region he comes from. Oh, the tribe. Because, yes, and the tribe. Nigeria was aglam uh, amalgamated in 1914 for the ease of administration and what have you. So we were brought together. We will not say that it was Log Lugard mm. or the British government that did that. This is a divine arrangement. God so did it that we will come together. So whoever that becomes president, tribalism should not be an option. When you are tribalistic, when, when there is nepotism, then certain things will not be right. So we need a neutral man, a young man who have ideas, who can take us to the promised land. Yes, we will look at that in the, in the last segment of this program. Uh, looking at the young people, and their preparation uh, towards uh, 2019. Uh, I, I, I will just uh, leave you with this video to tell you, uh, just like uh, the canon has uh, started it, uh, I, I will throw up a video by one of the former governor of uh, uh, eastern part of this country to give us 
his own insight into uh, stuff. Uh, that's uh, Peter Obi. So while we wait uh, for that video, uh, we'll be coming back to talk about youth preparation okay. and to round it up for this year's Independence Day celebration. Thank you for staying. How did we get, as a philosopher, unexamined life is not worth living? So my first question is, how did we get here? Is to ask ourselves, how did we get that we are divided is no longer an issue. Everybody knows that. But how did we get here? Looking for that, how we arrive here, the cause part of our building the solution to solving it. How are we going to get out of this mess we find ourselves? If you look at what is happening in Nigeria today, whether you call it I say it every day, whether you call it uh, divided Nigeria, what are our problem? We have a nation that is divided. We're not talking about division now along ethnic lines only. We have religious lines. We have even elite class clashes because of disparity of income and everything. We shouldn't be. So you have a crisis. We have issue of security of all forms, whether it's the security of life and property and any other forms of security, and to have an economy that is heading south. No matter what anybody tells you, every head, our chief of the MO saying yesterday that our debt is just 21.7 trillion, 70 billion dollars, and he said, it's not that when you compare it to our GDP, it's 17% when we should have about maybe about 30 or 40. The question is not how much you owe, but what did you use the one you borrowed to do? Borrowing money is not a problem. I lived it. all my life, I've always borrowed money. <laughs> but did you invest it or did you use it for consumption? When you're borrowing for consumption, you're heading for a disaster. When you're borrowing for wedding and for to bury your parents that didn't save anything to be buried with, you're heading for a disaster. So it's not really about how much we owe. Forgetting that in year 2007, all our debts were canceled. So why did we get here? What did we use it? Where are the bridges? Where are the roads? Where are they? What we use it to do? That is the challenge. That is the question. 